contest. Like Tino mentioned, Singapore getting the better of Zimbabwe for the very first time just three nights ago. But you have to say that Zimbabwe have probably been the best team on, on paper and on the field as well in this Tri-Nations, Tino. From some outstanding cricket led by their captain, Sean Williams. You'd expect that as well from uh, the Zimbabwean side. A lot more experience. Yes, they brought in uh, a lot of younger boys to try and mix with the, the experience as we're just going to take a break for the national anthems. Watching live pitches from the Indian Association here in Singapore. One final time as we see the two teams shake hands. Great to see wonderful sportsmanship being displayed all through this tournament and three teams enjoying playing with each other, you know.
Absolutely. The camaraderie between uh, these three teams has been uh, next to none. Good to see that uh, the teams have got a good rapport in amongst themselves. A bit of emotion shown by the Zimbabweans the other evening after their loss. But you can expect that. But otherwise, on the whole, it's been really good. Absolutely. We had the two captains in the center with Adrian just a while ago. Here's a quick update on what happened at the toss. Okay. A warm, a warm welcome, welcome to the Indian Association ground here in Singapore for the final match of the Tri-Nations Series here. We're joined by the two captains of Zimbabwe and Singapore. We did some fantastic cricket over the last week. And uh, with the match back here, uh, Mr. Nara and Nkuti from India. I'm John by the other point. Hits. Hits is the ball. Hits is the ball. Hits come up. Hits. 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 They didn't go quite so far as you would have liked with cruising at one stage. Were you surprised in the way they bounced back? No, I wasn't surprised. I think they're both really well. You know, you have to give credit to the coach too. The young guy in their team came up and that's what you want to see in your team, man. Especially when you're building a winner like this. So, well done to them on that. And to my guys, I was just really proud of that. So, you know, I'm not a success. In the second game, we're just having to turn off our own purpose. And on a personal note, you've had a great series here, a couple of half-time teams, a lot of great hits. How have you enjoyed your time here in Singapore? I've not much time here in Singapore, but obviously going back to the cricket, you know, I just have a few half but I haven't got a lot of and that's what you're trying to do, so there's lots of improvements to be made, and yeah. And any changes for tonight? Yes, Wellington, I'm not sure that comes in for Brown Good luck, go well, thank you. I'm Jabba Boo, the Singapore captain. Happy with that? Yeah. Let's go back to Sunday night, because now the whole cricket world has its eyes on Singapore after what you did. How does that make you feel as a captain of the side? It's great only to get them the You wanted your boys to play fiercest cricket when you came up against them over last week. How impressed have you been with the youngsters in this time? John and Kripal. Right, we're just a couple of minutes away from start of play here. It's going to be... The aggressive Surendran Chandra Mohan to open along with his partner Rohan Rangarajan. And no surprises from Zimbabwe. It is going to be the captain, Sean Williams. You know, with the ball in hand once again from the pavilion end. Well, Zimbabwe have taken this ploy throughout this uh, Tri Nations tournament back in Bangladesh as well prior to this, opening with the spinner. Wellington Masakadza took on that role early in this series, took some stick in the last couple of games. Sean Williams in the last game was extremely good with the ball. Opened up first over once again from the pavilion end, which he's doing again tonight. You saw what Rohan just did, right? That's the typical Shivnarain Chandapal that we see there. Haven't seen that in a long time, actually. Very hard surface on the pitch, so maybe he feels his uh, studs wouldn't be able to do justice to his marking of where he wants to stand. Just about ready to go. Sean Williams, first up. Short. Just looking at this Singaporean batting order, you know, they obviously are top heavy. They rely on their top four. That is Tim Davids and the two opening batsmen especially. So Sean probably thinking that, you know, we need to strike and strike early. 
And he's had plenty of luck and success on this pitch. And even if he doesn't strike Sean, quite often he's uh, the most economical bowler in the Zimbabwean lineup. Up and over the top. That's a good shot. From Rangarajan. It's probably just pulled up by Ryan Bull. Good chase to the boundary. Zimbabwean fielders chasing in pairs. That's a good boundary save, actually. For those of you just tuning in, just the one change for Zimbabwe. Brian Chari will sit out today, and he's going to make way for Wellington Mazakatsa, the left-arm spinner. Might just see him with the ball quite early on. I wouldn't be surprised. And for the very first time this evening, it's going to be Surendran Chandramohan on strike as Singapore scamper through for three runs on that previous delivery. Been a bit short this morning, this evening. Sorry, Sean Williams. Something that uh, he doesn't normally do when he starts off. I want to get that ball a little bit fuller. Better length. And that's the area that he wants to be in. We saw the Sri Lankan openers take the Zimbabwean spinners on in the last game. And he's probably thinking, maybe just pull it back a little bit more than pitch it up because of these short, straight boundaries. That's the one, pitch number two. And uh, as we saw, pitch that uh, people can score runs on first and second innings. Bottom edge, just misses the stumps. We'll come back to that uh, pitch in the next over. First over gone, three for no loss. That's the surface. We're using the first three encounters. Again, dry, bare, maybe a slight bit of moisture under the surface because of uh, the pitch being covered all day yesterday with all the rain that we had. And that's where you'll get the little brown color from. But to be honest, I don't think you're going to get too much out of the surface from the spinners. Seamers might just get a little bit of movement if they pitch the ball up, which we've seen. But back of a length throughout the series, we've seen that the ball is carrying through to the keepers with good bounce. And I'll expect the same thing from the surface. It's had two or three days to rest up. So uh, I think uh, somebody like Tendai Chitara, if he can pitch that ball up, get it in the right areas, might just be able to give it a bit of movement, create some chances. He's been pretty quick as Tendai Chitara. So if there's anyone who's going to use the pace and the this pitch has to offer, it is certainly going to be this man. He's bowling from the far end. It's very interesting to see how Rohan and Surendran go about their business, like I mentioned in some of the previous games as well. And they rely on their hand-eye coordination. And just sheer bat speed that they're able to generate and make some of those shots happen. And these kind of conditions, very ideal. The fact that they don't use their feet because there's no grass, not much assistance for the bowlers. And uh, the ball really does get onto the bat. You can see there's almost a little bit of a sheen on the surface, a bit of a shine, which tells you that rock hard, you expect the ball to skid onto the bat, especially the faster bowlers. So Rain and Chandra Mohan, quite unhappy that the umpire didn't give that a wide. Once again, short and wide, and Chandra Mohan misses out on the cut shot there. He is one who likes to stay leg side of the ball and play through the offside. What Chatara has done is gone a bit wider. And because uh, Chandra Mohan's initial movement is to give himself room to go out the leg stump, he's going to struggle to get uh, bat onto ball those last couple of deliveries. If he had stayed in his normal position at the crease, definitely could have put those couple of balls away short and wide from Chatara. He's got to stay away from those areas on the surface. This time onto the pads and away on the leg. But apart from that, plenty of sixes. Obviously, seen 
space and bounds for for the faster men as well all in all there has been ideal conditions Swap ball by Chitara. Nicely put away through the onside. Now you can see he's deliberately bowling at the batsman, trying to cramp him up for room because he's seen him go outside the leg stump to try and open up that offside. Good thinking. Cricket all round. Had a good time yourself. Week for you here. Apart from the cricket, have you had some time to step out? And look at what Singapore has to offer. Yeah, I have a little bit. I've been uh, taking a stroll outside the hotel every now and then. Wonderful area. I've realized that if I want to get out and see some stuff, I need to do it before about 3 p.m. in the afternoon when the clouds gather and uh, the rain starts to fall. But otherwise, lovely country, great people. I've thoroughly enjoyed uh, my time in Singapore. Nicely bowled again by Chatara. At the batsman, cramping him up for room. End of two overs, nine for no loss. So another change in the bowling from Sean Williams. Yeah, it's going to be Daniel Jackiel to bowl the third over from the pavilion end. And we saw him do plenty of this in the previous game. Six six bowlers that bowled in the first nine overs last time, Tino, when Zimbabwe had the ball in hand. Yeah. And it's something that they've been doing a lot of, trying to mix up the bowlers early on, give everybody an opportunity. And I think Sean Williams is saying to himself, small boundaries, quick outfields. I don't want these batsmen getting used to any of the bowlers. Keeps them guessing as well. Exactly. Uh, good ploy from him. Asked him about that at the post-match, and he said it's something that we've discussed as uh, the bowling captain. Sorry, the captain and the bowling coach, Douglas Hondo. And you'll have to say, in the last game, it worked pretty well for them. For those of you just tuning in, we've thoroughly enjoyed bringing you live pictures of the Singapore Tri-Nations T20I brought to you by Instagram. Great pictures brought to you by Villo HDTV, the fan code app by Dream11. Obviously, the Facebook page as well, Singapore Cricket Association and vcsports.com. So plenty of options for you to catch live action of the Singapore Tri-Nations as Daniel Jackian runs in. Bald. Just a bit of shape away from the right-hander. Drawing him forward. That's a good link. That's where he wants to be on this kind of a surface. If he's going to play a good shot and punch you over the top, that's a good shot. And batsmen are allowed to do that. First ball, a bit short and wide. Same as Chatara in his first over. And you'll have to say the Zimbabwean bowlers have got away with those. They try to come into a good length. Try and get the batsman forcing you away like that. It's gone in the air. And it looks like it might have gone all the way for six. Richmond Mutumbami is not happy with that. It's gone for four. Now that's the area that I'm talking about. He's got nobody back on the offside. Sweeper or third man. And once you bowl short like that, he can just afford to throw his bat at it. Not worry about it. Where the ball is going to go as long as it's gone up and over the infield. Forcing you away like that. Talk to us a little bit about Daniel Jackiel. You know, tell us a little bit about where he's from and how much of cricket that he's been playing. Yeah, Daniel Jackiel, he's got uh, a lovely story actually. There's a change in the field. Third man goes back to the boundary. Fine leg comes up. Oh, again, short and wide. He's got to try and sort that line and length out, Daniel Jackiel. And last delivery. 
previous delivery, sorry, to that last one was actually six runs. Umpire changing his decision. But yeah, Daniel Jack Hill plays a lot of club cricket in Harare, has done that for a long time. And then uh, it was noticed in the nets, whenever uh, we've got touring teams coming to Zimbabwe, always one of the net bowlers. And was given an opportunity to play for uh, the biggest franchise during our limited overs competition last year. That's the Mash Eagles from Harare. Up and over, good shot. Well, that probably is six number two, and yes, it is. With an offer from Daniel Jackiel and Surendran Chandamon says thank you. He gave that a wild swing, made good contact, and that clears the square boundary for an excellent six. Have a look at that flow off the bat. So with we're talking about, cannot afford to bowl wide to these gentlemen, especially with the field that's set. Just going back to your question. So he played uh, in the limited overs competition for the Mashonland Eagles. For the Eagles, actually. And uh, was top wicket taker in that competition. And that's why he's been rewarded with uh, selection into the national side. Still very raw, young. Needs lots of time. It'll be wide from Jack Hill. And the best part about an opportunity or a tournament it gives a platform and an opportunity for the youngsters, you know, to display their skills and show us what they got. And I think just a gauge is really important for themselves, not for those that have picked them, just so they can see where they're at with their cricket. Always good to be performing in your home conditions and playing against cricketers that you know, but the ultimate is testing yourself against other international cricketers. Three overs gone, 24 for no loss. Well, the names may not necessarily be in the right order, but we will probably see Tim Davids come in at number three. But until now, it's been a good, solid start from Singapore. Three overs completed, 24 for no loss, and it's going to be... Ah! Yes, a wicket of the very first delivery. Wellington Mazakatsa was dropped for the previous game, comes back, and boy, has he answered the captain's call. Gets Rohan Rangarajan and good piece of wicket keeping there. It's a good catch. Skidded on to Rohan Rangarajan. He probably expected it to just turn away a little bit. It didn't. And uh, he has to go five. He got from just six deliveries. 24 for one, Singapore. Right, it's going to be Tim Davids to walk on to the center now. You probably have to say Singapore's best batsman in this series, Tim Davids. He's been consistent. He's happy playing the sheet anchor role. And when the need arises, he certainly has it in him to go big as well. Timothy David also made his debut as a captain in this series. For the first game when Amjad Mehboob rested himself. And Tina, I was going to ask you this. I was surprised that Wellington Mazakatsa was dropped for the one game that he was because he was very impressive in his first outing, did go for a few runs in the next game, but he certainly seems to be a talented spinner. Yeah, he took some stick in that second game, and I'm assuming that's the reason why he was left out of uh, that last match against Nepal. 
His role normally is to open the bowling in T20 cricket. We talked about Sean Williams taking over that role in the last game and today. One that turns the ball a lot. You can get the ball through very quickly to the batsman. A typical left arm off spinner action. Yeah, I think he's a little bit taller, a bit lankier than most. And I think that's why he gets that ball through a little bit quicker. And in general, he's one who plays white ball cricket at home, limited overs, T20 cricket. So he cannot afford, especially if he's going to be bowling early in the innings, to toss the ball too much. Otherwise, it gives the batsman an opportunity to get after him. So his mould very much one of uh, keeping the runs down and being economic as opposed to striking, even though the ability to strike he has. And Sean obviously recognizes the fact that he's not it's through and No, you don't want to be spoiling shot to Surendra Chandamohan, especially in the mood that he's in today. That was asking to be hit, shot onto his pads, and that was easy pickings for six number three for Chandra Mohan. He's got right back quickly, hasn't he? And the man that's on the boundary on the onside is uh, a deep mid-wicket. So he knew that if he can just get it square, he's getting exactly that. That's nicely played. Well fielded, but he's punched it and it's going to go over the boundary. Now that's another quick delivery from Wellington Masakadza, but wide outside the off stump. Really nicely negotiated. Very, very clever batting this from Surendra and Chandramohan. They're using the pace of Masakadza. Valiant effort in vain, unfortunately. Had too much on it. Races past the fielder. This is a good, solid start from Singapore. Yes, they've lost the one wicket, but Chandramohan is getting a move on. Now, a bit wavered from Mazakatsa in this over. We've seen a bit of everything. Wicket of the very first delivery, a six, a boundary, now a wide. Much better. That's the line and length that he'd probably want to be a lot more consistent about. Four overs completed in Singapore, 38 for one. Square leg and third man. Deepak right, Tino through. And the sweep has gone back on the offside because of that shot. This time, Tim bang, Tim straight back over the bowler's head. Yeah, we saw him early on in the tournament and how powerful Steps he was out, in that first game big, especially. How big? He's, it's out Makes of here. And he took his time early on and he's, he finds a medium in his batting. He strikes the ball he goes well. again. He doesn't look to he strike the ball from ball one. It's out of here again. Obviously, Timothy plays a lot head. of his cricket here. Understands yeah. the ground, understands yeah, the dimensions. Accurate and he can change understands the, the surface. Having the said that, it certainly showed us how powerful he can be. He took advantage of those fuller deliveries from the bowlers. Wonderful <laughs> we go. He hits He's it. played some cricket in the Big Bash League, and you really know the size of the grounds in Australia. This ground is certainly no match to that. He's a big man, big lad is Tim Davids. And we saw him play, score some of the biggest hits we've seen in this tournament. So far. Definitely. The other man who has been belligerent is Paras Kadka. I wonder how many balls we lost the other day when he had that record-breaking 100. 106 not out and just 52 balls. We were talking about these short to straight boundaries, but uh, some of the strokes were sort of sailing way over it with ease anyway. Fantastic delivery from Chatara there. Straight through Tim's defense. Probably beaten for pace as well. How has that missed the stumps? Not understanding. As soon as I saw this happen, I thought this is crashing into the stumps. Let's just have another look at it. Oh, just over. Shot on this occasion and was short enough for Tim Davids to put it back past the bowler. 
You don't often see a pull shot that goes past the umpire, but on this occasion it was quick. Tim Davids may be a little late, but he was enough to make good contact for runs, and that gets Tim off. That's a really good shot because it wasn't that short. It's just a little uh, slap off the front foot. Well, that's well balled by Chatara. You see him come down the wicket and he's followed him. Tim David looks like uh, he's a man on a mission. A little front foot slap a couple of balls ago. Next ball down the wicket. Looking to get after the bowler. You told us about Daniel Jackio's little story, Dino. Talk to us about Tendai Chatara. He has been so impressive at the highest level. We saw he was always amongst the wickets in Bangladesh in that tri series. Certainly, be one that has an exciting prospect, exciting future in Zimbabwean cricket. Absolutely, he strikes early, and he does so because he pitches the ball up. Gives the ball an opportunity to swing around a bit. Very accurate when he's on song. It can be very, very difficult to get away. Well, it was this very pitch and the exact two same teams where we saw almost 360 runs being scored in the 36 overs the last time these two teams met. Basically, this is a, ah, just when I was saying that was a batting paradise, this trip, Tim Davids pulls one to the deep mid wicket ridge, an excellent shot that was just too quick for the fielder, and another boundary to the end, end the fifth over, and Singapore 48 for one. Right, we're back for the final over of the power play and a change in the commentary box for the next five overs. It's going to be Shezad, joined by Adrian. Thanks very much, uh, Nav and Tino there. A very warm welcome to our uh, viewers around the world here for this uh, Singapore Tri-Nation Series 2019, the T20 Series, of course, powered by InstaRem. Worked away for a quick single there from Surinder and Chandra Mohan. Singapore in pretty decent nick at the moment. And enjoying the series here very much, uh, Adrian, as Sean Williams is on again. Plenty there to work with for Timothy David, who's going great guns already. Yeah, he's been the, uh, the star of the tournament for Singapore. Exceptional hitting. We've seen him against Nepal, against Zimbabwe the other night. Just picking up from where he left off the other night. I think Sean Williams felt he had to bring himself back on to, to rein them in because these two have started to build up a little bit of an imposing partnership. Got some momentum behind them. Yes, yeah, Surinder and Chandra Mohan as well. Explosive, as we've seen from, uh, from him so far. Not afraid to take the aerial route. On cue <laughs> from Adrian and it's absolutely smashed away. Yep, stands and delivers. That is his style. Not much with the feet, feet, uh, feet movement, excuse me. Doesn't need to. He clubs it. Hits it so hard. You mentioned stand and deliver. Doesn't need the footwork. Knows exactly where to hit the ball. He shuffles back. He'll take that as well. I think this is 
some the difference between a batsman like Surendran and perhaps some of his Nepalese counterparts who who didn't really vary it, just always tried to play their shots and didn't try to work the singles. And that's why he's got Tim David at the other end, who goes down the ground. That is absolutely massive. Has gone into the empty plot behind the clubhouse, or behind the other end of the clubhouse, sorry. Huge one there of Sean Williams. 67 for one, off six. Very, very good over for Singapore. Both Surendran and uh, Timothy David got into the act there. And it's another change of bowling here for Zimbabwe. They are just looking at different solutions here. Yeah, that six was also the 50th maximum of the Singapore Tri-Nation. Tim, uh, Tim David on cue. Knocked that out of the park. That was just a loosener, wasn't it? Plenty of width on that for Mutambodzi. He'll take that any day. Thank you very much. So wide. He's asking to be hit. And Surrender and Chandra Mohan quickly moves on to 43. In the mood tonight. We've seen him get starts, but no better day than tonight to make it count.